opportunities are for grabbing and back in 1986 I was offered the chance to fly to Australia on the flight deck of a jumbo jet. One of my five sisters was married to a flight engineer with British Airways and at that time free travel was offered to family members once a year or so. Wow! Being a self-employed woodworker I was badly in need of a break and the day before I departed I bought a camcorder on hire purchase. In fact my first camcorder. So this short film is really my first documentary which was a kind of video diary with disjointed sound. So I've tidied the film up and added this narrative. The six month trip in 1986 allowed me to honour a promise I'd made to Paul Alessio who I'd met ten years previously in England on a design scholarship. I looked after him and his wife and took them to Scotland to stay at my uncle's home near Loch Lomond where I spent much of my youth. In fact it was my home for a while. Paul insisted I came and stayed with him on his farm on the hills above Adelaide. In fact he encouraged me to emigrate and I very nearly did. When I arrived in Perth I stayed with the British Airways flight crew at the Hilton Hotel and when they left I booked into a more modest hotel. I instantly made friends with the Lithuanian owner whose daughter happened to be an up-and-coming pop singer and within two days I seemed to be part of the family, being offered exciting job opportunities and even the offer of an arranged marriage if I decided I want to stay in Australia after my six-month visa had run out. I was amazed at how easy it seemed to make friends and I guess because I was then, and still am I hope, a fairly physical sort of person and enjoyed the outdoors and I think they warmed to me in that respect. My trip was really very open-ended. I'd been to most of Europe but never ventured this far and was encouraged that my modern if not somewhat avant-garde furniture design would be really well received in Australia. Uh, Australia being a much younger country and one not relying so much on tradition. So having landed in Perth, after a few days I toured around Western Australia uh, driving through some of the vast eucalyptus forests and I landed up at the home of a furniture designer called Leslie Wright who'd visited my workshop in England. I made my way across the famous Noolabar Desert. The coach driver played a joke on me whilst I was photographing the view of Antarctica and drove off without me. There's never a dull moment when you travel. I eventually reached Paul's Hilltop Farm outside Adelaide which had stunning views and not unlike my home in Scotland. Paul had built his own house with a tennis court and he and his brother-in-law were very competent players. He had also dammed up a valley on his land and turned it into a trout lake where I could indulge my favourite sport and also serve up supper for his young family. Paul's wife Sylvia was a highly competent sheep shearer and they had their own flock as well as ponies. And Paul's brother-in-law Alan was a major gas contractor for South Australia and also owned land up in Andamooka in the opal fields. I joined him and his son Mark for a trip. It was 40 degrees in the shade and there wasn't much of that. The opal lying beneath my feet was worth billions of dollars. But where was it? Just one tiny stone would have paid off my mortgage and at one point I was handed a piece of painted lady probably worth several hundred pounds and while I was filming it I dropped it. We stayed in a caravan and had huge lizards crawling around under our feet. One night it was so hot that Alan got up and went with his son to sleep under a bush while I stuck my head in the fridge to cool off. He loved driving deep into the outback. His wife used to worry about him getting lost. We were a long way from civilization.
During my six month trip, I bought a mini moke and put a sun canopy on it. My Australian friends described it as the shit shack because it had a corrugated roof. Just before I left Paul's farm, I used his workshop to try my hand at working some Australian blackwood and made my first and only piece of woodwork in Australia. I decided to make one of my wood clocks. It comprises a solid wood ball which accommodates the movement, resting on a pedestal. The ball is made up of square sectioned laminates. The most difficult part is in turning the ball perfectly round, and of course it's a matter of guesswork. A tricky part is in guessing the hollow for the ball in the pedestal. The idea is that the ball rotates to show the time at the required angle. The crucial detail is the profile where the pedestal meets the ball. Now for the final sanding. The clock movement is mounted in a plastic rim assembly. Baize is stuck to the base. The final touch, Danish oil, applied generously to enhance the grain. I gave it as a gift to my good friend and host. From Adelaide I drove the Mini Moke to Melbourne where I stayed with English friends and then I trekked up to Sydney where I landed up helping build a wooden schooner that was to be a flagship in the 1986 America's Cup. Whilst in Sydney I also met some of the country's leading woodworkers and what better introduction to the variety of Australian timbers than this rather unusual work of art by expatriate Richard Crossland. The chassis is in Myrtle, Tasmanian Myrtle. The roll bars and suspension are in Silver Ash. Yes. The wheels, the tyres are, are Queensland Walnut. The wheels themselves are Hewan Pine. Yes. Wheel nuts, Rosewood or Rose Mahogany. Um, what else have we got? The seat. The seat is Silky Oak. The shock absorbers, if you can turn in on the shock absorbers there. Yes. They are black bean. The, um, the front wheel hub assemblies yes. or mounting for the wheels are in Queensland Walnut. Um, steering column, Tasmanian oak. Yes. Or eucalypt. Look at this amazing rack and pinion. Does all this work? Yes, absolutely. Yeah, the service of well, Wildlife wood sculptor Peter Garrigy summed up much of the essence of Australia as I found it in 1986. A bold confidence in the future and the power of the natural elements. A sense of vast, untapped space and freedom. Curiously, I got homesick. <laughs>